Good morning and welcome to CT Brandon. We are so glad that you can join with us today. I am Pastor Nikki and I would love to say welcome. We are going to have an awesome Palm Sunday today and maybe you're like, hey, what's Palm Sunday? It is our celebration the week before Easter Sunday and we are so excited for Easter Sunday, but we have Palm Sunday to focus on today. So let's head over to our lead pastor, Pastor Michael. It is Palm Sunday, which means we have one place to land in the book of Mark. So let's head to Mark 11, verses 1 to 10. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, what are you doing? Tell him the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it and sat, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who had went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I, I, this is such a, a powerful image. Jesus entering, the people shouting, the, the excitement. Uh, even in our live service, the kids are going to be doing a, some stuff like that, and it's going to be very cool during worship. But I want to call this talk today, Thanks in Advance. Have you ever put at the bottom of an email, Thanks in Advance? Or, here is my request, now thanks in advance. This is how you get, how you end an email that you're trying to get a specific response. Or maybe just a response at all. Maybe you're getting frustrated with the recipient and they have stopped being helpful. Thanks in advance. Now, hold on to that thought. This is important for today. If you have been around church for more than five minutes, you know that there are some very symbolic pieces that we throw around very casually during the Easter season. I want to take a a little bit deeper of a look, deeper than your normal Sunday school answer at a couple of these pieces. Now, first of all, do you see how critical mass is growing? the crowd. Merriam-Webster defines critical mass as a size, a number, or an amount large enough to produce a particular result. In this case, critical mass would be having enough people outside and on side with Jesus, with him being the king. The odds would be in their favor. Critical mass was built, and to accomplish an insurrection, it would be absolutely necessary. Now, don't forget we talked about Barabbas last week, that that insurrection that was hot on everybody's minds. They wanted to take their Jerusalem back to clean it of the Romans and live the way they had always imagined. Secondly, they are all gathered in the right place. Jerusalem is a world-class city in the ancient, ancient Near East. It was pretty fancy. They had aqueducts, for instance, that ran into the middle of the city with mineral water. So they had these mineral pools, kind of like temple gardens in Moose Jaw, but just for everyone to use at their leisure. It also had the grand temple. This was the jewel in the crown of the Jews and the Romans. And we'll talk more about that in a couple of moments. But thirdly, It was Jewish feast time, the feast of Passover, a time of celebration. What would be better than celebrating the new king of the Jews? 
And just like in times of old, as King Jehu was anointed king of Israel, cloaks were spread out and people shouted, and Jehu was king. Fourth, Hosanna translated, save now. There is no disguising what they are after. The critical mass has assembled in the right place at the right time, chanting the right things. Now all this behavior is screaming and displaying one phrase to Jesus, one phrase that is summed up on everything else that they are doing, and that is thanks in advance. Now let's get to work. This thanks in advance comes at the same time as a giant shift in Jesus' story. Remember, baptism it shifted for him. Transfiguration shifted. And what we're watching happen in Jesus' story now is that he moves from a healer preacher to a seer and authoritative teacher. One commentator put it like this, sower of the word to owner of the vineyard. Now let's read the last verse in this section of Mark. I think it helps put some perspective on how Jesus responds to their thanks in advance request. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. He left. Jesus walks into the temple, and he looks around. Okay, so the temple. This is the second temple, which is built on the exact same site as Solomon's great temple. But it was rebuilt about 600 years before this piece of the story by those who were returning from exile. This temple was a key piece of Jewish identity especially in the Roman-occupied Jerusalem. But even the temple wasn't safe from the Roman versus Jewish culture wars. It was renovated by Herod just before this time. He Romanized it. Herod fought the religious culture war, and he won. So for Jesus to come into the temple as his first action in Jerusalem and look around, it is really important because this is what's happening prophetically. What was God's statement on earth, the temple? What is God's statement on earth, Jesus? And what will be God's statement on earth, which is the kingdom of God, together? What was meets what is and stands in the presence of what will be. But there is also that one line at the end of the sentence. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Remember, the journey to Jerusalem began at the top of populated Israel with the Mount of Transfiguration, and we are finally at the place of Jesus' arrival. He looks around, but decided to keep going instead. Where is the grand gesture of kingship, the, the, the show of force? Where, where is the fight? Where is the insurrection? Save now was being chanted as he entered. The crowd already declared Jesus king. It was his for the taking. He looks around and walks away. He goes another two miles. That is more determined than just thinking about it. He thought about it, and he walked away. That's more than a maybe. That is a no. How often do we think God does that in our lives? Follow me. We give him our thanks in advance statement. We told him what needs to be done to make our lives better, and it's just like he keeps walking. It's like... He keeps saying, I will take care of your needs, um, just not now. But God, here's the solution to my problems. Can you, can, you, can you follow through on this? And then he just walks away. 
We even tell him exactly who to curse, who to smite, who to destroy, who to bless, and all that stuff in our prayers. For whatever reason, he just keeps walking. Remember, Jesus shifted with this story. He went from healer preacher to the owner of the vineyard. He isn't about to be told what to do. Whatever they thought is no longer relevant. Here is why Jesus is like no other. Because Jesus didn't care about the religious battle for supremacy. Jesus didn't care about the political battle. Jesus didn't care about the culture war that was being fought constantly. Those weren't the fight that Jesus was preparing for. He came to fight death, not Rome. The Apostle Paul wrote that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's not people. We don't fight against people, and we don't fight against their agendas. We as Christians need to fight against whatever is the opposite of love, peace, healing, and, and bringing people to safety. I'm more afraid of Christians with weird agendas than I am anything else because I know that Jesus skipped all that stuff that we seem to focus on and went right after death. Do you know what Hosanna actually meant? Thanks in advance, Jesus. But remember, Jesus prayed to God and said, your will, not mine. We want a powerful God, but as long as he is our genie and fixes our problems the way we need them fixed. Maybe Jesus has a better answer than you are patient enough to hear. Let's shift with Jesus. Thank you in advance for your will, not mine, being displayed in my life. Let's close today with a simple but profound prayer, a, a small prayer. And I know you, you probably know it, so feel free to pray this with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who've sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. What a great message from Pastor Michael. And it's been awesome to celebrate Palm Sunday with you, looking toward Easter and, you know, looking toward how we can bring hope and love and joy and the peace of Jesus to others. And so we hope you feel refilled and refreshed this week. And hey, if you have never connected with us before, please head to our website, www.ctbrandon.com. Click on I'm new here. And we would love to connect with you to go with you in this journey. We believe church is not just something you go to. It is a community. It is a family of people supporting one another. And so we'd love to connect with you. Also, if you came prepared to give, we are so thankful for that. We are so blessed here that we have such um, a community of generous givers uh, just to do the, the things that we do here, the ministries, the missions we support, um, just all the things happening here. We say thank you. So we try and make it as easy as you can to give. Uh, you can do it by texting the number on the screen. You can uh, do it through e-transfer info at ctbren.com. As well, if you want to meet us in person, Monday to Thursday, we do have office hours that are open. So please come in and meet our office person, Leslie, and she will greet you with a smile and 
yeah, it'll just be awesome. And just for you to know, next Sunday, we have Easter Sunday. We are so excited for it. Uh, we have baptisms happening. We have a pancake breakfast happening at 9.30. So before service, you know, fill yourself up. We would love to see you there. We are so excited. Easter is such a celebration here. So we would love to see you next week, 9.30. We'll be eating pancakes and they're going to be delicious. Don't worry, I am not the one doing the cooking. Um, and then also we have a general meeting, an annual general meeting coming up on April 23rd. And that will be following service. And as well, there's a potluck that day. Don't you love, you know, food and church always go so well together. So there's a potluck happening that day. And, and we're asking you to bring something that reminds you of home, whatever that means for you. For me, it might be hot dogs and craft dinner. I haven't, you know, confirm that yet, but bring something from home and we are going to be having our annual general meeting. So that is awesome. There are so many other things happening at the church though. So please um, connect with us on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, if you connect with us through email, that's another great way to just know what's going on here at CT Brandon. And again, we hope that you have an amazing week, that, that you feel the love of Jesus and that you can continue to share it with others. And we can't wait to see you again next week.